Risky, risky. Okay, we're fine. Let me boot up chat somewhere. Wait, where's my webcam? Ah, shit. I don't feel like looking for that right now. On the computer book. Go ahead and preemptively grab a drink real quick. Alright. What's good everybody? Those who have joined us thus far. Title says gaming, but there's no gaming. This is more important than gaming, Mr. Guy. What's up, play guy? You know what time it is. Peerless time, man. This is the real shit. Let me. It's it is also eight seventeen p.m. You're right on that one. You got me there. I think, will this be a vi YouTube video? Uh, maybe. I'll probably throw it up unedited onto my YouTube channel at some point. Thanks for the, thanks for the congratulations, Malarkster. I appreciate it. Alright. Um, how do I want to do this? This is gonna bother me. Just real quick. Okay. So, let me. Do y'all need to just put characters where I think they are, and then go down the list and talk about them, or like talk about each character as I place them? Which would y'all rather see? And I just make a tier list. No, I haven't ever made a tier list on a stream. I talked about bang matchups, but that was a was a different thing entirely. Talk as I place. 
word. I can do that. Um. Yeah. I'll go ahead and just start on talk as I place characters. Noel. Noel was kind of shit. I'll probably talk a little bit as I place them and then go back over once I finish. Do a little bit of both. Because I do just want to get characters where I think they are to some degree. Noelle is pretty shit. Noelle is like, this character has like nothing redeeming about her. She has good scramble potential. She has like good air buttons in some scenarios, but like, it kind of just doesn't matter. It's not enough to make her like good in really any situations. Nine is like, uh, shit. I think 9, as she's played currently, is like here, because she got her strengths, buttons are good. Um, yeah, her, <laughs> her strength is like her buttons are really fucking good, but besides that, this character has a lot of flaws, like her movement is kind of, her movement is okay for kiting and stuff, but her movement is kind of bad in a traditional sense. She doesn't really, like, this character with the button she has now would be better with, like, a normal character's movement kit than what she has. Um, her offense is good. Well, I'll talk about her offense last. Her defense is pretty shit, all things considered. She can't mash crouching, which matters a decent amount. Her DP is, like, pretty shit, and she doesn't have an actual backdash. So, like, in terms of, like, wake up invuln reversals, you only have to worry about anything from this character. She can't backdash. In a traditional sense, because her backdash isn't frame one. Your DP is bad, super easy to OS and kill her. And her mash is like. It loses to a lot of specific stuff. A lot of characters have buttons and things that they can. Like, will whiff on crouchers. But the really broken pressure tools on standing, so they can, like, shit on her if she chooses to stand mash, which is really her only option because her crouch mash is like 10 frames. Um, no 9 players do the good offense which is why she's here. But if 9 players did like the gravity set loop unblockables and did instant overhead consistently and did like her actual fucked up setups that they don't do, she'd probably be here. But I'll go ahead and put her here because I do think that this is where she'd end up if players actually did that kind of shit, but it's kind of hard to say exactly since she really does not like no player has demonstrated that shit too, too much. Nami next, um, fuck, this tier is going to be my top three, this is going to be like top three, and then like, really strong characters after top three, so, I'm going to be, I'm going to be so for real, Nami is not in my top three, I will get back to her later, but I think she's like fourth, um, Subaki, I think Subaki is really fucking good, Baki is like normal guy <laughs> unfollowed it's like oh, you just gotta hold that I'm sorry to say man Subaki just does a lot of shit really really well she's like a normal guy who does all the traditional normal guy things super well and she has like some of the, she has the best pressure in the game for a strike throw character because she has both both of her jabs are self chaining three times and she has a command grab, and she has whiff cancels, and she has good frame data, so her pressure is like fucking belligerent. Her offense is really, really good. And then, uh, her ability to f enforce, like, and create checkmate situations is pretty OD. Dubaki's a character who, like, can hit you twice. Like, she plays half the round like a normal guy. And then her last hit is like, I'm going to fuzzy you, or I'm going to command grab you, and then I'm going to RC OD Mugen, and you're going to fucking die off of it. I'm just going to RC OD, or just pop Mugen or whatever, and then you either have to burst, or you just lose the round at that point. And she can do that off of like basically any starter, which... If she had no mix, it would be whatever, but the fact that she has a command grab, and she has like, applicable, strong, rising instant overhead fuzzies makes it pretty fucked up. If the Subaki player is really on her shit. Um, paired with having good DP, good neutral, all the standard normal guy shit. Lychee, I also don't have her top three. She's like my fifth. Nami are like four and five for me. 
she's strong, but at the end of the day, she's like normal. She doesn't do anything super, super crazy. Like, Lychee does everything extremely well, but she doesn't do anything super, super fucked up like Carl or Rachel or Ezio or whoever do. Um, I think Lambda's kind of broken. Lambda's a good fucking character. Um, I mean, what is there to say? You've never seen a Subaki fuzzy? Yeah, I don't know why they don't do it, but I mean... It's strong. It exists. That shit is good, man. That character can, like, get a safe jump with JC, do Rising. She can literally do JC, Rising, JA, and then pop Mugen, and you eat 6k off of Fuzzy. And it's just like, shake my hand. Yeah, Lambda's strong, though. She has good neutral. Her offense is strong. Her defense is, like, surprisingly pretty good because she has both, like, a god zoner backdash. A. Her DP isn't good in a traditional sense as a DP, but it's really good mid stagger pressure. Like, her DP is insane versus stagger pressure mid screen. And obviously, if she's right, she counter hits you and she does like 5k off of her DP. Reversal super is also a good fast reversal super that once again does like 5k on counter hit. I value specializations from characters over being jack of all trades. Uh. Uh, it depends on what you specialize in. I think this game, at the end of the day, there are only a small handful of characters that if your defense... Here, here's the thing. Blaze Blue is a game, like, the most important thing a character can have is fucked up offense. Because strong players in this game, traditionally, like, they just have good defense and they will just, they will just block you out. Like, your offense needs to be really fucking insane in this game. When your offense is good enough that it doesn't take, like, that player defense doesn't count, it doesn't really matter for what your character does once they get in, your character goes exponentially upwards, because that is, like, a massive, massive wall that gatekeeps a lot of characters from strength. Tager, um... I don't think Tager's bottom tier. I almost want to put him, like, super low mid, but I'm gonna put him just low for now. He definitely has a shit ton of weaknesses, but Tigger's offense is pretty good whenever he gets knockdowns that aren't fucking gadget finger. Um, Tigger's damage is obviously high, his defense is obviously really, really good. His main issue is just his neutral is trash, which is a very bad problem to have and is extremely exploitable, but he has, he has his good situations, unlike a character like Noel or something who's just terrible. Um, Moo. I'll put Moo like upper mid. I think you missed the first 10 minutes. Yeah, you're late, man. Don't worry. I'm going to go back over characters. I'm kind of just putting people in places for right the second. Moo. Moo is a weird one because her neutral is good. Her neutral is very good. Um... Her defense is obviously pretty strong because she has a DP and a zoner backdash and like she just has a DP on a character who shouldn't really have a DP which makes her pretty solid but the big thing for Moo is her offense is trash. This character's mix up is like actually just non-existent. Um, like you're more scared of blocking like Naoto or Ragna characters with already really fucking whack offense that struggle to open you up. You're more scared of blocking them than you are her. She like this character should not be opening you up without 50 meter, and even if she gets 50 meter, it's like, even then, the shit that she has is fuzzy blockable. This character's offense is very, very, very bad, in my opinion, at least in terms of actually opening people up. For lockdown, her offense is strong, and it's difficult to escape her pressure, but you don't really need to be scared of her offense. And she's not like, um, she's not like Susan, whose Susan is kind of similar in a way. She's not like Susan, where she can, like, just stack risk-reward and just, like, keep on doing super belligerent things to make you, like, flinch and scared to block her for... Because, like, eventually you get cracked open, because her health sucks. So, you can RPS this character at the points that you're allowed to, and, like, she can't... Like, if she responds with RPSing in kind, unless your character is, like... I don't even fucking know, dude. 
like S or a character with a low damage and like low HP, you're you're not that scared to box this character because she will just die in an interaction or two. Or three maybe. Jubei. I think Jubei's bad. His movement's good. Everything else is pretty much shit. His movement's good and his neutral is pretty solid. And his offense is good. Like good TM, but the risk reward on his offense is bad, so it turns out being like mediocre. And his defense sucks. So I don't rate Jubei super super highly. Azreal. Shit, I wanna put I kinda wanna put Azreal in low tier. I think this character suffers a lot from having poor movement. Where's the cam at? I couldn't find it. I don't feel like looking for it. It is what it is. Also, I have the light off in my room and I don't really feel like turning it on. So that's another detractor for me looking for it, I'm not gonna lie. So yeah, where was I? Oh, Azrael. Azrael's good, but it's like... has a lot of faults. His damage is great. His offense is like, his offense is solid. Is this just in general? Yeah, this is just like a tier list. His offense is solid, but he is pretty weak to overdrive and he's really, really weak to IVB and fuzzy jump. Honestly, his offense is like, his opening mix is solid, but his offense is kind of not that good. He struggles a lot with extended pressure, which is a pretty big issue for a character who's not just running, like, actual legitimate set play. Um, his defense is... Honestly not amazing. He's, like, if your character has to run projectile Oki... TLR, DR, which five characters these? Um, Noel, she's ass. Dubaki, normal guy, who has a really strong win conditions and strong states. Like, um, Mugen is a really, really strong game closer. Her stagger pressure is probably the best in the game because two multi chaining jabs that chain into each other three times. Um, solid damage. Fucking. A command grab she just has a lot of good stuff she's like a normal guy once she gets you to 50 percent, she can just kill you off of like something corny like fuzzy mugen or like command grab rc mugen or some shit like that or command grab rc od etc etc nami very very strong but i don't think she's as strong as the top three which the god tier is my top three um lychee is like the perfect soldier normal guy but at the end of the day she doesn't have the fucked up offense that the characters above her have and that's just like you just need that insane disgusting offense that invalidates defensive strength because the strongest plays we players are just incredibly strong defensive players who will block you out so that degree of like unfuckwithableness on your offense matters more than anything else for me um nine has a lot of faults has really good buttons Kind of shit movement and bad defense. And her offense is... Her offense as it is currently isn't amazing. But it has like room to move. And it has room to be experimented with. That's why she's... If the concepts like the gravity unblockables and all the shit that 9 can do didn't exist. She'd be here. But she's here because that stuff does exist. 9 players just don't do it. And that's pretty much it. I think that's all you missed. Oh, and Lambda's broken. God neutral, good offense, good defense, good damage. Like, I don't know, this character's just very, very solid. She doesn't really have any noticeable glaring faults. And, like, her risk reward on a lot of her standard options is, like, very skewed in her favor. Like, yeah, her DP has weaknesses, but it also does 5k if she's right. Reversal super is just literally a normal reversal super that also does like 5k if she's right. Monarch's about to blow a fuse seeing Lambda this high. He can hold that. I'll put S low just for him. 
I guess this isn't low actually. S is strong. She's arguably here, but I'm gonna put her here for right this. Eh. Let me come back to S actually. Kokonoe. I think Kogo is better than these two, which is. Maybe she's not better than Nami. I think she's definitely better than Lychee. But Kogo is a very, very strong character. I feel like I don't need to go into her strengths too, too much. I've talked about it so, so much over the years, but like her neutral is fucking insane. Her, her ability to just win off of one interaction is the highest in the game. This character is better at winning off of a single hit than Arakune is, which is fucking ridiculous. Yeah, I mean, I'll go back through later. I kind of just want to get characters in their spots for right this second. S. I'll put her at the end. I'll deal with her later. I'll deal with Bang later. I'll save Bang for last. Ragna is... Ragna's upper mid, but he's not in the same tier as this character. So I'm going to bump her up and we're going to do that. Ragna just does everything pretty solidly, but has his faults for sure. At the end of the day. He's, he's strong everywhere, except offensively, he has his struggle, because opening players up who have like genuinely really solid defenses, Ragna is a challenge. It's, that shit is not free. Ragna is a character who you will just win like an interaction and get offense, and then run pressure for 15 seconds and end up not opening someone up sometimes. You just kind of got to accept that as a fact of life. But his defense is obviously godlike. He's got the best DP in the game. He's got a 5 frame jab. And then his neutral. He has 5B. 5B's god poke. Insanely strong button. He has the best. He has like literally the best jabs in the game for like every single in context. His 5A is fucking amazing in neutral. His JA is probably the best JA in the game, like straight up. That shit is fucking. That shit is ridiculous. His JC is amazing. He has solid air stall options. He has godlike anti air. His neutral is like his biggest selling point because his neutral is like phenomenal. Like his neutral, outside of the really, really fucked up broken characters, is like the best you're gonna get without insane like projectile traps and shit all over the screen. His buttons are great. His movement is good, etc., etc. Better than Light JD? No. Definitely not. Um. New. I want to put new bottom, but she might be low. The thing with new is like, she is as good. She's as good as these characters, but her matchup spread is awful. Like she gets absolutely dumpstered by so many characters. She's kind of like bottom tier by default because of that. But she has actual relevant matchups and actual relevant characters that she can fight. Compared to like Noel, who's just a fart and just like this character is irrelevant entirely. So yeah. She's she's bottom, but she's gonna be better than the other bottom tiers because she has solid matchups versus relevant characters in some situations. She just like She just has so many bad matchups. And a lot of her bad matchups are against like Characters that you just cannot be having bad matchups against. Yeah, Lychee like JD. Pretty good butt. At the end of the day. Trust me. I know. Mmm, Jin. Jin's good. Jin's. Jin's very good. I think Jin is probably the, uh... And besides maybe Tsubaki, which... I'll count Tsubaki as a normal guy. I think Jin is the best normal guy in the game who is an S. Or Tsubaki. 
or Mai, but Mai is not a normal guy. Mai is just a fucking dickhead, so she doesn't really count either. But Jin is very, very strong. Neutral, goaded. Offense, he might have the best offense, like, just flat out of all the normal guys, except maybe Mai. Um, his defense isn't bad. He has his deep, his CDP, obviously not the best, but like he still has a DP. He has his DDP if he needs it. He has a parry super, so his defense is solid in a lot of situations. He kind of just has to use it carefully. And his CDP is like, in terms of its raw speed, it's bad, but the issue of it being stubby can be negated. If you just micro dash into his CDP like your Nauto, which takes an execution requirement and like is obviously annoying, but this is talking about the the peak potential of the character is, and I think that makes that DP significantly better. And I also just do that every single time I use Jin CDP, and it feels fine because you can just zero frame micro dash into it and make it slide and make it strong. Word, get you around to BB. Oh, you meant to the game. Okay, my bad. I can't read. Um, Ibiki. Defender can make CDP work with IBDP. Yeah. As an IBDP option, it's strong. And the thing with Jin's DP is it has a shit ton of hit stun, or shit ton of block stun, and it has a really good knockdown. So, like, if you do DP someone, you're in a great spot. And if you DPRC as Jin, like, you can frame trap people with 6A. You can just make them hold like 6A 2B high low mix immediately out of R seeing a DP, which is very, very strong. Um Ibiki's kinda just like a shitty Ragna. Not much to say about him. Ooh, Hazama. There's a lot to talk about for you, man. I'll come back to you later. Bullet. Let me, let me just put all the characters where I think they are, and then come back and walk through. Bullet is, well it's not that bad bruh. Plat is also not that bad. Plat is pretty solid honestly. Makoto is fucking bottom one, that character sucks ass. Valk. Let me do this. Valk, very good. Susan, super fucking solid. Rachel, finally get one of our top three. Crucial member. Hakuman, really good. Elika, solid. Has her faults. She's not, like, great, but her buttons are good. Her scramble potential is solid. She has, like, good movement. She's not a bad character. Relius. Um. I really don't want to put Relius over Lambda, but I feel like I have to. Yeah, I guess Relius is probably better than her. She's probably better than 9, too. You know what? Fuck 9, man. I'll put her there. Um. I'm not an Amane believer. Top 1. Naoto is good. Tau is not that bad. Tarumi is decent. Probably worse than Jubei. Maybe worse than Tager. I don't know. This one's kind of hard. Where does Doomfist fit in? We'll get to that later. Dude, where the fuck? Ugh, this one's actually kind of tough. Chat, do y'all think... Tarumi or Tager is a better character. That Naoto placement. Uh, I mean Naoto has no mix, man. What else is there to say? Uh, how are you as a Naoto player gonna open up Monarch and win the game? Okay, you E and D P'd him like twice. And now, now you're running pressure. How are you gonna open him up and win from that state? 
Like, you tell me. Do me better? I'll take your word for it. Let me make let me make this top five actually. That'll make me feel better. Yeah, this that looks a lot cleaner. Let me do this actually. Kagura. Kagura's not that bad. But yeah, I mean, for Naoto, it's a combination of, like, his offense is kind of ass. His his neutral is solid, but his neutral really isn't that scary. Naoto's neutral options are pretty committal. I am much more scared of Ragna just being able to press 665B at any point than I am of any of Naoto's, like, enhanced special gimmicks, jump scares in neutral. And then his, like, his standard buttons are really stubby. He's good at brawling, and he's good at scrambling, but in terms of like actually playing the neutral game, his neutral is not phenomenal. Kune. Mm. Let me do that. Kune is good. I think Arakune struggles a lot from losing to these characters. But at the end of the day, actually Kune is like here. His matchup spread is too volatile. He is His character power is like somewhere. His character power, if we ju were just rating purely on character power, he'd be like here. Like somewhere in this area, maybe top of here, but he would be in a solid placing. But the way his matchups shake out, like due to how his character functions. Yeah, Kune's win con is very strong, but like his other states are pretty weak. Without curse, this character is like actual doo 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 dog shit bottom. <laughs> Holy shit, that jump scared me. Thanks for the follow, whoever followed. Without curse, character's fucking trash. Um, curse is obviously an insanely strong win con, but like, he just can't win neutral versus some characters. Like, Kune versus Lychee, Kune versus Nami, even like Coco, Rachel. Like, you, those matchups are fucked, man. You're, you're not winning those matchups. It is, like, absurd the degree you have to gap. Like, you literally don't win those matchups unless your character makes a giant mistake in neutral. Outside of that, they should just be unwinnable on paper, which puts him down a few pegs. Then he still has some struggle matchups versus a decent amount of characters who aren't that crazy. Like Amane fucks him up. This character 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 fucks him up. Jin fucks him up, funnily enough. Um, sure, Valt kind of beats his ass. Yeah, he has a lot of struggles. His win con is like his win con is among these three top characters, but the the difference maker is is that these characters are insanely powerful at every single stage of the game. Whereas Arakune is fucking doo doo dog shit ass until he gets cursed and then he becomes one of these characters. Is this character amazing? Every point of the game, doesn't matter. Same for her. And then she's like here. She's like this area when she's without gain art and then she gets gain art and she becomes top one so she ends up like here bang bang's kind of broken man well, i'm gonna keep it so for real with you this character is really good he has a struggle matchups but he has like the best neutral in the game he has pretty solid offense he has like the best overdrive in the game he has some of the best, like, checkmate situations in the game. And then he has solid defense, or strong defensive tools. Well, his defensive tools are, like, not strong, but, like, his defensive tools are insanely high reward. The only character who 
gets rewarded as much as him whenever they guess right on defense as Hakuman. And even like even accounting for that, Bang is still insanely, insanely high. Like if Bang decides that he wants to do a drive, then cancel into overdrive, he's just he's gonna get just as much as Hakuman would if he did the exact same shit. For less resources spent too. Um, yeah. Let me let me think of if I want to move anyone, and then I'll start just going down the list and talking about people. No. I kind of want to do that. Explanation top to bottom. Uh, I think I'm going to go bottom to top. But yeah, that is the plan. Starting with Makoto. You know, I'll do this actually. Starting with Noel. I went over Noel before, but Noel has like zero redeeming qualities. The character is just really shit. She like she struggles hard in neutral. Her offense is not great. Looks good. Her uh defense is pretty pretty piss poor. She has a seven frame super, which is pretty cool, but like that doesn't doesn't really make much of a difference. At the end of the day, her uh, her options outside of that are bad. 4D is a big gimmick. 4D is literally just like a BB Gen knowledge check. Do I not have ad block? I have I have an ad block. It just kind of sucks. Um, yeah, Makoto doesn't do anything. Or Noel doesn't do anything super super great. Neither does Makoto. I'm talking about characters who don't do great things. Makoto is a character. Who needs to do who needs to be doing Susan damage. If Makoto did Susan damage, she would be like here. But she doesn't even do that. She is a brawler boxer character with bad risk reward, bad buttons, bad defense, and like shitty neutral. This character genuinely just doesn't do anything. The best thing she does is the fact that she has like her fucking asteroid whatever, the spinny stance into an actual like legit high-low mix-up that's solid, but even that is like, who cares, you need RC to convert it, and it still does fucking whack damage, because this character, like, can't break 4k to save her life. What's Hibiki doing all, down, all the way down there? Hibiki's just a worse Ragna, that character's not that good. New, I kinda already went over her, but... She's, her character power is not that terrible in terms of like a character, she's probably like here, like here or some shit. But her matchup spread is so terrible and like she loses to so many relevant characters, like pretty much most of these characters fuck her up. All these characters fuck her up. She beats this character, I don't know, I don't know. This matchup is probably bad. This, this character is a better version of her. Don't know. Don't know. I think she wins this. This matchup sucks. She wins this. This matchup's also not very good. This matchup's terrible. Like, the entire top half of the cast literally just kicks her teeth in. So she ends up low tier. If the tier list, like, if you leave new exactly the same and just, like, throw the game into a slot machine and, like, randomly buff and nerf everyone else, she ends up, like, mid tier. But the fact of the matter is, is that she loses to every, like, almost every valuable. Uh, Every single, like, relevant character, which kind of puts her in a rough spot. Celica. I kind of talked about her before, but... She has... She has okay stagger pressure. Celica's stagger pressure is not that bad. Her staggers are, like, decent. Her buttons are good. Her speed is good. Besides that, she doesn't really have anything going for her. I guess her damage is pretty solid, and like, yeah, that's pretty much it. Her her character gimmick literally requires her to be losing to like, 
literally just like losing really hard to take any advantage of it. That's pretty shit for her. Um, yeah, she, she doesn't do anything super super well. She's kind of a struggle bus character. I think her air normals are better. Yeah, I agree. Celica's air normals are really really good. Like Celica's buttons are very strong. 5B is good. Her 6B, like the anti-air is really amazing. A lot of her air buttons, like you said. She has a lot of strong strong buttons, but at the end of the day, buttons aren't everything. No, she also has a really good dive kick. Her dive kicks and like her air stall are really, really strong. But she doesn't get great reward off of them, so it doesn't matter too, too much. Tager. Tager's defense is incredibly belligerent and very strong against a lot of characters. He can't really like abuse it against set play, but against anything that's not set play, Tager's de defense is crazy. Tager's offense is incredibly strong. His the only issue with his offense is that Gadget Finger is a shit knockdown. If Tager could consistently always just get good knockdowns that applied magnetism, Tager would go up like three tiers. But yeah, his his issue is his neutral. Like I said before, he like has pretty awful awful neutral, and some characters can literally just like consistently. Not interact with him like Kazama, or multiple others, and that kind of puts him in a rough spot. Tarumi. Tarumi has a lot of flaws. Kind of difficult to talk about Tarumi because it's like his weaknesses are awkward because it's like his. It's not like his buttons are terrible; they're just below average. It's just like everything he does is kind of below average. His defense is not very great. His buttons are below average. His speed is good, which that's a nice thing. His damage without overdrive is kind of below average. His uh, his pressure is okay. He has pretty good offense. Like in terms of being a strike throw character, Termi's offense is not bad. He's got a good overhead. He's got. I mean, his command grab is like. His command grab is not good, but it's not like a meme. Like it's not God Press. It is a genuine mental stack mix up option. So that's not a bad thing to have. Um, he's got the meter gimmick. He can actually do shit like Crush Trigger RC is like a relevant thing that this character can do, which like most characters can't really ever do that because it's terrible meter economy. But Tarumi just like doesn't give a fuck because he's the meter the meter builder guy, and he gets to do stuff like that, which makes him pretty solid in some situations. Um, Jubei talked about before, goaded movement, decent, pretty solid offense, all things considered. But his risk reward is terrible, and his defense is really bad. And overall, like his strengths just aren't enough to account for how bad his weaknesses are. At least in my opinion, I haven't fought a ton of strong Jubes. He could be like up another tier, but I don't know. I just don't have belief in that character. Bullet. Hmm. Well, it's not that bad. The thing, what's bad about Bullet, is like these top, all these top characters, they all beat her shit in like 7-3. That's what makes Bullet so low. If these, if you literally just erase the top 6 from the game, just like get rid of them, remove like Lychee and S2, then Bullet becomes like, here or some shit. She becomes perfectly fine, but the fact of the matter is, is that she does lose very hard to the characters at the very top, which makes things rough for her. And the no, like, dash block thing is a genuine issue versus zoners. That shit is very, very tough for her. Um, she certainly has her her faults, but her ability to scramble is insane. A lot of her buttons are really fucking good. Her 2B is amazing. Her anti-air is great. All of her air buttons are crazy. Her pressure is strong because... The thing with her pressure is that every single button she has is, like, every single normal in Bullet's kit is, like, minus one. Like, she has the thing that people talk about with Naoto, where it's like, oh, he can just set, reset his pressure off of any button. It's hard to challenge at any point. She does that, too. Every single button that Bullet has is, like, is literally minus one. Like, let me pull up this character's dust loop right this second. And she has a 6 frame 2A, like, on top of all this minus 1 shit, which makes her able to, like, trade and challenge in situations characters can't usually do so. 
5a minus 1, 5b minus 1, 5c minus 1, 2a minus 1, 2b minus 6. Okay, fine. Your 2b has a slight weakness. 2c, also barely minus, minus 2. 6a minus 3. Six, okay, we get into slightly more minus things after that, but like, the fact of the matter is, 5b is minus 1 and 5c is minus 1, and the character is a 2 frame jab, or a 6 frame jab. Like, she can realistically box and reset pressure in situations that other characters cannot. It is dash cancelable, yeah. Ultimately, bullet's pressure is pretty good. And she, this character also just, like, has insane risk reward on, like, everything. She will kill you if you're wrong. She will literally just murder you, like, in cold blood if you ever guess wrong against her. She will just do, like, 15k damage and fucking murder you. She does not care. Azriel, I talked about before, but, uh... Kind of just does the same shit that Bullet does, but, but without a command grab. And in exchange, she has... In exchange, he can, like, jump cancel his dash. <laughs> they're kind of they kind of just do the same shit, I'm not gonna lie. Um, he struggles with extended pressure, like I said before. His extended pressure is not amazing. But he has good scramble potential. His anti-airs are really good. His opening mix-up is strong for a strike throw character. His defense is like... Oh yeah, I forgot to talk about Bullet's defense, but her defense is crazy because she can threaten both DP and 720. Having both of those at the same time makes her defense fucking insane. Azrael's DP is pretty shit, but, but it's, it's like decent, decent paired with the fact that he has a good backdash and a 6 frame 5 eight and hits crouchers in his level 2. Um... Yeah. yeah. Azrael's not, not terrible, not great. Kind, kind of a just whatever, whatever character. character. All, All my echoing. echoing. Let, Let me try, try to fix that. that. Hello? Hello? Testing. Testing. Um, let me see. Where's my audio settings in OBS? Did I do anything? On up, let go. Uh. Unplug and replug the mic. Yeah, I also. I mean, I already did that like twice. I don't know. Let me try. That fix it. It's better now. All right, cool. Let's 
so where was I? I forgot. Um, Asriel, okay. I think I'm pretty much, I pretty much went over what I needed to for this character. Yeah, Asriel's DP is like ass, but it becomes usable because IBDP still functions as it normally should. Like his DP's slow, but it's fast enough that like he can still IBDP shit, unlike 9 or someone who like just can't. Um... Backdash is good mid-screen. Like I said, 5A is strong because it's 6 frame. Hits Croucher is level 2. All these things combined with each other add up to, like, defense, that decent defense. Uh, Azrael's neutral is kind of bad because he's so slow, but it's also, like, a thing where it's difficult for characters to approach him because his anti-air is good and his ability to counter poke and, like, exist as a wall in neutral is pretty strong. But yeah, a lot of, like, his strengths still end up making him, like, a, a gimmick character where, like, he can't play the game consistently and strong fundamentally. He kind of just has to be right and guess super hard, which is not consistent. And, uh, like, he's not a character who can just play super, super safe and then win. Whereas, if you're fighting a character who can just play the game fundamentally solidly and just consistently win, you're going to have a tough time. What is this bullshit? I'm talking, man. It's discussion time. Yeah, Azrael's kind of whatever. Amane. Amane is like tough, dude. My experience versus Amane, and what I personally think about the game, makes me think that Amane is like whatever, but I haven't fought amazing Amane players. I haven't seen this character, like, I haven't seen this character put to the test like that. I think Amane could probably be stronger, but Amane is like the character in this game that I am the least sure on. If I were to put like an unsure tier, I would put Amane in there for sure, but I just don't feel like doing that. I don't have too much to say about him. He's very subject to change for me. But with what I like, I think of the game right now, and what I know about this character right now, I think he's like here. Hibiki is kind of just like shitty Ragna. I don't, I don't think this character is great. I think his stagger pressure <clears throat> and his offense is kind of just worse than a lot of the other normal guys. I don't think that he does anything super, super special in terms of his offense. He, uh, his defense is good. I mean, he has a nine frame DP, but it's nothing special. And I don't think his DP is as good as Ragnar's. His, uh, his neutral is very, his neutral is interesting because his JC is great. You think he's better Ragnar? I don't know. I don't think I don't think he really does much better than Ragna, except maybe have a little bit better risk reward. But even then, he doesn't do as much damage as Ragna does on average. He just has better cash out with Overdrive. What's worse about it than Divider? It doesn't hit as high up, and it doesn't hit quite as far forward. It might hit slightly for further behind, but I don't know. The only people who did work with Hibiki at a high level barely player don't play anymore. I mean, yeah. I don't... I don't know. I think this character is like... I mean, shit, let me think of... I played Raccoon a lot. I think Raccoon is pretty strong. Bleh, pretty strong. In my opinion, I think Raccoon was like... Probably the best active Hibiki that I've played. I mean, I've played Oracle and like Bracket and shit in Snowfields and stuff. And I think Raccoon was better and I've played her a lot. But I just don't think this character is super, super crazy. Yeah, Raccoon is definitely inactive now. Um. 
calm. But yeah. So his pressure is like, I think his stagger game is worse than Ragna. And like worse than the characters above him. Defense, like I said, nothing super special. And then his neutral is, his neutral is solid in some ways. But it's like, his pokes aren't amazing. Like he's not, he's not pressing, uh, he's not pressing 665B. He's just not. Like he can't do that kind of shit. His anti-air is solid. But his anti-air is not like, unfailable. His anti-air is not the best in the game or anything like that. The strong 2C, like he doesn't have a good 5A anti-air. And his 2C is like, I don't know, it's just better than average. It's not amazing. He has his JC, and his JC is a very good button, but he can't just exist solely on the back of JC. Then he also has like legitimate strong air stalls. Like his jumping drives and shit are pretty good, but like he can't. His neutral cannot be strong solely on the back of having strong air stall and having a good JC. Like and having decent movement. Like he just. I don't know, his neutral's just not all that. I think, like, Ibiki, when you think of him, he doesn't seem that bad, but the sum of his parts is just not that high. He's not, he's not shit. Like, this character's not bad. He is, but he is mid. I do think he's, like, mid-tier. He's pretty whatever. Yeah, Elyon is, Elyon is gone, man. GG's, rest in peace. That guy, like, literally is jersey hung over the fireplace, from what I've heard. But yeah, maybe he's whatever. Plat? You know what, maybe you're right, maybe Plat is not that bad. Plat, I put Plat here, like in the very start, I'll put Plat here. I think Plat's solid. Over Tau next. Tau is... This character is not that fucking bad, man. Tau is not that bad. This character has the highest, most ridiculous speed in the game. Maybe Valx is slightly higher. I don't even, I don't even think Valx is higher, I just think Valx is like... I, I don't even have anything to say. She's faster than Valk. Fuck it. Like, she just is. Highest speed in the game. She has, like... <clears throat> she has a lot of poor hurtboxes on a lot of her buttons, but a lot of her buttons are just super fucking good. Um, Like, her 6A is great. Her 2B is great. Her... JV is pretty solid. Her, uh... What other good buttons does she have? She has some good buttons, is the end of the story. So character's neutral is strong because she has OD movement and some decent buttons. Character's defense, she has a 6 frame 2A that low profiles super well. She has crawl, which is fucking amazing. She has a 7 frame super, so most characters can't safe jump it with traditional safe jumps that beat 9 framers. Um, crawl is like... One, arguably one of the best defensive tools in the entire game like you need to be the issue with crawl is you actually need a brain to utilize it properly but crawl is insanely strong and just gives her like flat out full punishes on so much shit like she literally just gets to crawl something and then punish you in recovery and just do like an optimal punish starter on a standing or crouching opponent and it's really really fucking strong um Her offense is good. Character has good staggers, and like her, she gets an opening 50-50 on her safe jumps that cover rolls, which like you just have to hold that. This character's problem is that she has shitty risk reward. And the top tiers kind of beat her up, but like Tao is not bad. Tao does like Tao does everything above average at worst. She just has shitty risk reward because of low health, low damage. Uh -oh. 
Hogara. Yeah, I don't think Tau's matchup spread is bad either. I think it's literally like... Who does Tau actually lose hard to? She gets shit on by Mai, she gets shit on by Izanami. Outside of that, does she really have any like super terrible matchups? She does pretty bad versus Lychee to my knowledge, but like she does okay versus the rest of the top tiers, if I recall correctly. A big fan of Kagura. Kagura. What does Kagura do, man? Hmm. I mean, Kagura does... If Flash Kick was a real reversal, Kagura would be up a lot, but that kind of puts him back. That shit kind of sucks. Um, or it was a real reversal on Wake Up, and like you could just do it consistently. He presses JC and throws Orb and Flash Kicks. That is pretty much what Kagura does. Kagura's neutral is like... I think Kagura has the most average neutral in the game. Which is like funny to say, but his neutral is like neither good nor bad because JC is good, Orb is good, Flash Kicks are good in a vacuum, but actually like abusing these things and consistently getting in on your opponent with him is a different story entirely. Probably a low average, but his neutral is not like unplayable. It's just kind of whatever. Um, his defense, like I said before, he has like. The shitty thing of hard knockdowns fuck him up, but he still has a flash kick at the end of the day. And he has beef F at the end of the day. So, like, those two things combined still give him really strong defense. He's a pain in the ass to properly pressure. Yeah, his matchup spread is a little tough. His offense is genuinely, like... If Overdrive didn't exist, Kagura would have, like, some of the most belligerent offense in the game. But Kagura's offense is kind of... Pretty shit versus OD. Um, that's like a flaw for him, but like he still has good stagger game. He doesn't have to hard commit to super fucked up mix and get shit on by OD frame one. And then once he does take your burst or like take your OD or whatever, Kagura's offense is insane. He has like multiple great overheads. He has an instant overhead. He has like 15 million lows paired with a command grab. He has a good frame data on his shit. Like, once he gets in and you don't have resources to get him off you, this character is scary. And his damage is insane. Like, absolutely absurd damage. Um, Kogger is one of those characters where it's like, he's kind of he's kind of a little bit struggle, but his risk reward is so good that he ends up being fine. Because he can just be right a couple times and win the game. I think he's better than Platt. Plat is so awkward to talk about because she's just not played to her potential anywhere. Uh, it's hard to say because her damage is solid with the right items. Her offense is really good with the right items. Her fucking her defense is kind of shit. Her neutral is good and her neutral gets even better with the right items. Like, she just, she's good with the right items. She always has that asterisk of she does this well with the right item, which can be a struggle, because if you don't have the right item, you're not in the great situation in a lot of scenarios. Um, she's not bad, but you need to be, like, creative. Don't think there's a single item that's shit. I think bat's kind of shit. I don't think bat is good. Having a 7 frame 2A is cruel. 7 frame 2A is average. Why would she have a 6 frame 2A, man? There are like 3 characters with a 6 frame 2A. She doesn't need that shit. Bat's okay as a reversal. I don't know. I think it's like... Nah, Halo is good. I think Halo is a pretty solid item. 
Halo controls a lot of neutral space, and the fact that like if you don't block it, the initial hit, and it comes back and still is active as a hitbox is strong. Yeah, Halo is really good. But yeah, I think I think that is like like I said, it wastes an item slot rotation for something that you don't want, which is really really bad. Cause like the thing with her, she needs to get the item she wants quickly, like on the dot. Like she she doesn't have time to waste getting bat and throwing bat away. That is like getting bat is like fucking. You just don't want that to happen. Super chests are nasty work, yeah. Her super items are like pretty much all amazing except super bat. Super bat is actually cosmetic. Um Yeah, I think that's pretty much it. I don't know, I can't speak on her matchup chart, I just don't know what her matchup spread looks like. Hazama. Hazama's um You missed the parts with Carl and Bang. I'm going up the list, not down. Um, I'll get to them later. Hazama's pretty good. Hazama has some of like the best neutral in the game. His issues come in the fact that his defense is actually like he can't do shit. He has good jabs to mash, but like. He doesn't even have a reversal super air, let alone a DP. So once he gets put on defense, he's struggling very hard. And then uh, his offense is his offense is kind of risky for the kind of for how he like Azama's offense is risky for the kind of character he is, I guess would be the way to say it. Since his defense is so bad, he really can't afford to be wrong and take a hit and get put on defense. So, like, him having risky offensive structure where he plays strike throw is kind of rough for him. Even if he has a command grab and a solid stagger game, the fact that he has, like, a shit micro dash kind of weakens, like, lessens those, those things. Like, if he had a normal dash, this character's offense would be a lot better, but he kind of just doesn't, so you can IBB him off of you, and, like, he can't, he can't, deal with that super consistently and then stance is like a meme stance doesn't matter unless you get hit meaty I like stance overhead or stance low outside of that it's literally like who cares which is kind of rough for him um and his neutral is like his neutral is amazing on paper but there's some characters who can kind of fuck it up consistently. Like he has, he struggles with dealing with the puppets in neutral. Like Relius and Carl can both kind of make his life tough. Um, characters like Esser Mai can bully him. Like extremely, extremely fucked up normal guy type characters can make his life kind of hell in neutral. Bang makes his life really hard in neutral. I'm sure Rachel kind of makes things tough. Um. Trying to think of who else. Yeah, his neutral is like strong, but his neutral is not like amazing, amazing. Coco, yeah, I'm sure Coco makes his neutral kind of hard to deal to probably put in work with, etc., etc. Next up is Ragna. Ragna's that guy. I already talked about Ragna before a decent amount, so I'm not going to go into it too much more. But it's like he does everything above average, except his pressure game is like. Good luck opening up super strong players. Besides that, he does everything above average, except for having kind of mediocre risk reward because his health is so low. But like, his neutrals as good as you're gonna get without having like insane projectiles or like traps and shit in neutral. His defense is like as good as you're gonna get without. I mean, I don't even know, dude. He just has the DP, the best DP in the game. His defense is just cracked. Like, uh, since it is just a normal DP, you have the like risks of having a normal DP being that if you're wrong and you don't have a meter, you can just die. But I don't know, that's like a, a cosmetic weakness. At the end of the day, he just has a go to DP. Just use it properly and you'll go really far. 
Um, yeah, there's not too much to say, man. He's just Ragna. He just presses buttons, and he presses them pretty well. If you press them good enough, you just win neutral a few times and win the game. Is what it is. And then Susan is kind of just like super Ragna. Like, everything I just said for Ragna is, like, you literally just apply it to him. The difference with Susan is he actually has, like, really fucked risk-reward. The issue is kind of just, like, he doesn't start the game with DP, so he can just get run over. But besides that, like, everything I said for Ragna is the same for him, where... His neutral is kind of great, because he has such good buttons. Um, his pressure is kind of lackluster, because... At the end of the day, he is just strike throw. He doesn't have anything super, super cheap. He has, like, 6C, 6D, and that's, like, his best mix-up. His actual, like, jumping fuzzies are all super easily fuzzy blockable. You just need to be paying attention. Um, yeah, this character struggles to open you up, which is a big, big weakness in this game. And then outside of that is, like, everything is solid above average. I guess his movement is bad, but, like, he makes up for that by the fact that he has, like, a godlike super jump and amazing air buttons. We can kind of... His poor grounded movement like makes him really really rough versus some characters and some characters can exploit it. <laughs> but his insane air movement like kind of fucks up some other characters that can't really exploit that, so it kind of evens out. His matchup spread is probably worse than Ragnar's. Is it? I don't know, man. I feel like that's kind of cap. Even if even if Susan's matchup spread is worse, Susan still has more of an explosiveness factor than Ragna does. Susan like has more applicable situations where you can't just get like the right hit and just kill you. And Ragna kind of always will struggle from that issue of he has high, he has above average damage, but he doesn't have like great beater dump cash out or like amazing amazing starters where you can do like six seven k off anything. Or Susan like can just fuck you up if he gets a really clean hit. And or is Ragna's gonna get like even on his best hits, he's gonna get like 4k or 5k and maybe like some health back. Um Susan like getting a good situation, not only does he get more damage than Ragna, he also starts snowballing you because he gets like multiple important specials that make him that much better. I just think the uh like if Ragnar's on the back foot, he has to just consistently gap you, where Susan is a snowball character. Once he gets going, it gets harder harder and harder to stop him, which matters a pretty decent amount. <laughs> now too. Um, I talked about Naoto a little bit before. Naoto has great buttons when we're not talking about poking in neutral. For po as far as pokes in neutral go, Ragna's buttons are kind of shit. Or, er, not Ragna. Naoto's buttons are kind of shit. Um, but they're good for brawling, and they're good for pressure. And they're also pretty good defensively. Um, his defense is obviously super, super good. He has enhanced DP. He has, like, enhanced sway to beat shit on defense. He has good mash buttons. He has like a solid anti air to use defensively. Um, his neutral is like. It's okay, but it's committal, like I said before, because he kind of has to commit to dash specials to really go anywhere in neutral. If he doesn't do that, he just has to whiff punish you because his buttons are not great for just standardly like poking and pressing buttons and shit in neutral. He doesn't have amazing. Uh, Amazing ways to get it on you outside of using like enhanced specials, which obviously have their weaknesses and are pretty big commitments. Um, his offense is like he just has nothing cheap on his offense. He can't do anything cheap to open you up at all. He has to literally just play like strike throw and open you up. And he doesn't have like the his strike throw is good, but his strike throw doesn't have anything that makes it like truly, truly cheap, like uh, like my or some shit. So you're not that scared of it. Um, 
yeah, I think that's pretty much it for that character. He has good risk reward, which is why he's higher than like Ragna. Just he's just solid. But he doesn't do anything super crazy, he's just solid. If you play like carefully and patiently and defensively versus Naoto, he kinda has a tough time. Naoto looks Naoto looks like he's up here. Like in the super strong ranges, whenever you just fucking box this character. If you're gonna box Naoto, he will just kill you. But you don't have to box Naoto. You can just play the game safely and slowly. And then he struggles. He doesn't struggle, he's still good, but like he doesn't have that factor where he just fucking runs you over like that. If you're not playing into his hands. Hakuman, so. Less incentivized to match versus Naoto than Ragna. I agree. I literally, I'm more scared of getting opened up by Ragna than I am Naoto, and I'm still not really scared of getting opened up by Ragna. Naoto is literally like, I'm just gonna hold down back and what's he gonna do about it? Has Bro gonna literally drain my entire barrier gauge from 100 to 0 and then crush trigger me? I, I don't really think so. <laughs> But yeah, Hakuman. So Hakuman is like, he's a weird character, but I think the thing with Hakuman is like, he is consistent. Well, he's not consistent. He is like a gambly dice roller man. But in terms of like his game plan and what he wants to do, Hakuman is consistent. Every matchup in the game, Hakuman plays very similarly. And Hakuman has like no super fucked up terrible matchups because Hakuman like, he just always gets to do Hakuman things like there's no changing what Hakuman does in neutral or like defensively he's just gonna do it regardless and not fucking care about what you think um he just will always be the guy with good neutral pokes or the guy with like decent neutral pokes the guy who cuts projectiles and the guy who can guess right on defense and then kill you off of it it's kind of just what he does He's not like a a case where things change drastically ever. He kind of just does his thing. Just as Hawkman. You just got to deal with it. Um. Yeah, he also has a... Like... Great risk reward, obviously, because he's Hawkman. He just. He is consistently inconsistent in the way that he wants to be, is how someone has described it to me before. And I, I pretty much agree. I think that Hawkman, like, he just does his thing. And you can never take away his thing from him. And then, obviously, like, if you have good projectiles and you have to play project with projectiles in neutral, he becomes, like, that much stronger. Yeah. Uh... Sorry, I was taking a drink. He uh... plays pretty well into like a lot of the top characters because he can just like shit on their projectiles and invalidate the way they want to play neutral to some extent and make them kind of have to play his game where they have to not just crutch on projectile neutral. They have to actually box him. Um, next. Starting with Mu, I talked about her a little bit earlier, but her big issue for me is her offense is trash. I think this character's offense is fucking terrible. I think she has the same issue that, like, Ragnar and Naoto have, where, like, how is she gonna open you up? Or, I didn't mean to do that, whoops. But even worse, because, like, she just has nothing cheap. Like, she has Ikutachi top. Ikutachi, Stein, cross-ups, mid-screen are strong. Those are good mix-ups. But that is all this character has, man. Like, outside of that, what the fuck is this character gonna do to open me up? She has 6B. It's an overhead that's incredibly reactable. That is, like... It's the only thing you have to look for whenever she reaches certain spacings. It's her only mix-up when she gets, like, a character's length away. That's super free to block. Her throw and her jab look pretty different, so those are like easy to differentiate between and not get TRM to buy. Just tech her throws. She can do like gapless crush trigger, but...
Like, I don't know, Gavish Crush Sugar is cool, but, like, that's all you have, man. Outside of that, like I said earlier, her neutral's good and her defense is good, but... She just... <sighs> if this character had better offense, she would be higher, because, like, a lot of her things are so strong, but her offense is just so mediocre that it hinders her as a character a lot. Nine, I talked about earlier actually said a lot about 9 earlier. I think pretty much everyone here has heard what I had to say about 9, where... Yeah, I've literally gone over this character like twice. I'll go ahead and skip ahead. Need to give her a money level chip. I don't know about that one. Hmm. Lambda is... Definitely a character. I also talked about her earlier, but I'll talk about her again, because fuck it. This character has a lot of good buttons. And this character has, like, obviously great neutral in general, because she's a zoner. So, her neutral is, like, top class. Just, like, off the back of being a zoner, her neutral is just amazing. Her offense is really, really strong. She has, like, incredible ability to mental stack you. And her mix-up options are, like, pretty good, all things considered. She gets strong opening mix-ups on her pressure because of how she gets to set up situations where she's, like, plus 30 or plus 40, and then she gets to do, like, empty low, delay IED shit, or, like, falling JC. Like, fuck up your fuzzy timings for those. She has good TRM game because her jab looks very, very similar to her throw. She has, uh... Pretty good staggers all around. Her her issue with her staggers is that like her jabs kind of bad frame data, but her two B zero on block, if I recall correctly. Let me check. I'm pretty sure it's zero. Two B two B two B. Or two B zero on block, so it kind of functions to make her staggers just like perfectly fine. Um. Like, I'm trying to find the issue with this character. She kind of just doesn't have an issue. Her issue is that she just doesn't do things as fucked up as those above her. But, like, offense is great. Neutral is great. Her defense is pretty good because she has things that regular characters have. Just better. Like, she has a good backdash. She has a solid reversal super that gives you a big reward on counter hit. So that just, like, already on its own makes her defense better than average. But then she also has 2-2-D, which 2-2-D is weak to, like, super active meaties. But, and it's not good in the corner, but mid screen, like outside of a meaty situation, that move is very strong. Does the character as a bummer sucks? It, it kind of does, but even then, it's not bad. Her neutral is bad versus, like, Carl and Rachel, or not neutral, her defense is bad versus like these two. Probably Easy Oi. Probably Nami, but like Coco without just running like set play off rip. Her defense is fine. Her defense is good versus Mai. Her defense is probably fine versus S. I know for a fact her defense is fine versus Valk. Her defense is good versus Bang. These two, her defense is fine versus. I. I mean, curse is curse. You're not doing jack shit. Relius, I would assume, probably covers her defensive options pretty well. Her defense isn't even really that bad versus all the characters above her. It's just like super hard lockdown set play. Kind of fucks her up. I'm sure her neutral definitely struggles against some of the top tiers, but it's not, not that bad. I've heard her neutral is pretty good versus Rachel, actually, because her projectiles are level 2 and Rachel's are level 1, so it just punches through them and hits her. <clears throat> but yeah. Her defense is like... Or where was I? I was at 2-2-D. So 2-2-D is a move. It's bad in the corner. 
and it's bad versus meaties, but like mid pressure, dealing with that move, like against frame traps and shit, is an actual nightmare. Like good fucking luck, checking for two two D in the middle of a string without just hard baiting it by like jumping and doing IAD button. Outside of that, like you're just getting shit on, or she's getting out and you're blocking two two D, and she's going back to neutral, which you're losing because she's a zoner, by the way. And then if you are wrong, like, drastically, and you do something, like, really dumb, like an overhead or a throw or something, and she guesses right, you're eating 5k, because 2-2-D just does 5k and counter it for some reason. Yeah, I don't know. Pretty much all there is to say about her, she just does everything pretty well. She doesn't do anything, like, super, super fucked, which is why she's not better, but she's not bad in any stretch of the word. Like, at any point in the game, she just does everything solid. Relius. So Relius is like hmm. What is there to say about this character, man? Carl too low? I agree. I almost want to make a Carl tier because that'd be funny. But Carl's fucked, man. Be spitting. Relius is pretty good. His neutral is very solid, he has like super good mid-range, and Dahl is obviously like a very strong tool to leverage a neutral, and then uh, his offense is just like inherently good because he's a puppet, he gets to set up like the high-low 50-50 shit, he gets to do like corny Dahl cross-up shit, he just has good options and good set plays. he's a puppet character. He doesn't have Carl level shit, but like his stuff is good. You're not going to react to most Aurelia's stuff unless you're just super super nasty. And even then, it's like, his his ability to mental stack you and like also just run strike throw on top of running layered mix-ups is really strong. Um, His defense is kind of whatever. He has an above average backdash, but like besides that, his defense kind of sucks. Lead lay as a defensive tool is kind of a meme. Um, His reversal super is... His reversal super is fine, but like it is just a standard reversal super. There's not anything super special to say. It's nice that he gets such good reward whenever it hits, but like, in terms of purely like how you use it as a defensive tool, it's nothing super special. Um, his matchup spread is also pretty solid. Doesn't really have any characters that fuck him up too hard, and he like does good versus a lot of relevant characters. He might be better than Jin, but I'll leave it how it is for now. Jin Kisaragi. Character is good. I talked about him earlier, so I'll do it quickly. But TLDR, he's good in every like every single situation. He's just above average and like everything. Offense is good, defense is good, neutral is good, damage is good. General like risk reward as a character is good. His matchup spread is pretty good, etc. Cetera, etc. Cetera. He's not like amazing and incredibly fucked up in any like significant way, but he's just good everywhere. He doesn't have anything that he super struggles with. Character's just solid. Um, Subaki. Kind of just the same as what I just said for Jin, where she's just good at everything, and then she also has fucked up shit like a command grab. And the best staggers in the game. And Mugen. This character is a character who, like, she'll do, like, a fucking Rising J fuzzy and a popping Mugen, and then you just eat 6k and die. Or she'll do, like, Command Grab RCOD and you'll eat 6k and die, etc, etc. There's a lot of strong situations where she can enforce bullshit stuff like that. Um. Yeah, she's kind of just, like, everything I said for Jin, except, like, once she gets you to 50%, she can kind of just... Do something corny and then like burn 50 bar or burn OD to just kill you off of it, which is pretty strong. Like she has a good checkmate situation. Arcune is Arcune. I feel like there's not much to say here. Best win con in the game. Shit before that. Character's not good before that point, but his win con is belligerent. Um could be higher if it wasn't for the fact that his matchup spread is bad. He gets his ass beat by all these characters too as well. This character two, this character. This character. This character. Probably this character. Etc. Cetera, etc. Cetera. His matchup spread is too poor to put him any higher, but his his win con is 
arguing at Chris, so. Kinda gotta, kinda gotta just hold that. Um, let's get Bang. I wanna talk about Bang last. Valk. He has, like... And some of the best neutral in the game, like straight up, Valk's neutral playstyle is literally like, you can just exist in spaces that you have to kind of fight and challenge him, and he can just whiff punish you for breathing. Like the character kind of just is so insanely fast that you can't commit to anything in neutral or he will just fuck you up from full screen. You kind of just got to hold that. Um, and his buttons are actually really good. Like Wolf 5B is crazy. His pokes and human form are pretty good. His human 6A is good. His air buttons are pretty solid. Like, it's hard to beat this character in neutral, and then once he gets in on you, he just runs, like, the most disgusting mix-ups in the video game. If this character had really good damage and, like, better risk-reward, he'd probably just blatantly be top tier. The thing that, like, balances Valk is the fact that he doesn't do crazy damage, and his resource bar isn't cosmetic. Yeah, fireball from full screen, you're punished. Exactly. That is the Valk classic. Um I'm gonna finally get into Also, the, yeah, the only character... Well, Bang has pretty shit matchups. Bang has some pretty doo-doo-ass matchups. But, yeah, Valk has some pretty terrible matchups, too. He's held back by his risk-reward not being great. And the fact that his matchup versus these two characters is shit. Character is bad. Character and these two characters all beat his ass. So he can't really be higher than them if all of them kick the shit out of him. S. S is kind of just like... S is literally what I said for Jin. Just she just does it better. She's just good everywhere. This character has no notable flaws. The reason why S isn't higher is because she doesn't do anything super super fucked up. She is like honest at the end of the day. She just does everything extremely well. So well that she gets put above most of the cast. She is just like in terms of being a traditional normal guy, she's just the best normal guy in the game. She has such strong tools at every point of the game. Like you just have to respect it and respect her game plan. Lychee is literally just everything that I just said for S. We're, Lychee is like a normal guy in disguise. She's not really a puppet or a set play character. She's literally just like a normal guy with a stick. Um, But I mean, stick is really fucking good. So her buttons are great. Her movement's good. Like. Yeah, Lychee Valk is pretty abysmal. But yeah, Lychee literally like. She just does everything well. Her defense is good. Her neutral is great. Her offense is pretty good. It's pretty long stick, yeah. It sure is. Like the like I feel like there's not too much to say about Lychee, because it's literally just she just does everything solid, but she doesn't do anything that fucked up to make you scared of her. Her offense is really good. It's really, really strong offense. It's very difficult to contest and challenge and get out of, but like it's not it's not looping 50-50 set play. You can block her out realistically. If you can block 22 frame overheads consistently and you can tech throws, then like Aichi's not going to get in on you and just kill you. She has to work pretty hard. Your reactions aren't terrible. The most fucked up thing she has is like staff cross-ups, but at that point, that's like one mix-up that she has that's good and it's not an amazing starter. And it's also like if you block that mix-up, her turn is over. So you don't have much to be scared of. That mix-up's also super OD unsafe. A lot of her stuff in general is pretty OD unsafe. She, like, stick can cover her to some degree, but she's still running the risks of standard strike throw characters to run her offense, which also fucks her up pretty bad, because the characters above her, they both do mix that invalidates how good your defense is, and they don't care about overdrive. They do both at the same time, which just makes them ridiculous. Um, yep, 
yeah, that's pretty much all I got to say for her. She has a good matchup spread, too. She could, if I really wanted to, I could put her, like, here, but I just don't feel like it. She'll be here for right now. Alrighty, chat room. Only unsafe with staff and her overheads. Yeah. It's not like... She's not losing to overdrive guard cancel that much, but I don't really... I don't know. I don't think overdrive guard cancel in general in this game is all that strong against most characters. It's literally just like she has to risk throwing overheads, and if those overheads get OD'd, she's gonna die. And like, that's just how it is. She just has to hold that. Which is like... I don't know. In terms of like this video game... It's not like a real weakness because everyone, except for these characters, has to deal with that shit. But like, that is that is the difference maker for why she's not these characters. Is because that is like a thing that you can do against her. That is the counterplay. You can realistically like react to her offense well and punish her for like running shitty pressure. You can block her out. You can do like you can apply universal strong defensive concepts to her offense and she just has to deal with it because she doesn't do anything that breaks the system i think yeah that's how i'll put it she's good but she doesn't break the system she's the best character in the game who doesn't outright break the system and break the fundamental flow of the game which all the characters above her do to some degree <clears throat> Let me uh let me get a drink real quick, I'll be right back. Outside of Carl Coco Bang doesn't all get shit on me the other top tiers. He does. S is bad. Lychee's terrible. Mai is abysmal. Easy Oi is all or not Easy Oi. Isanami is awful. Easy Oi is still bad. Don't get me wrong. And then uh Rachel's pretty bad too. Yeah, the top tiers fuck him up. Seeing Bang on Gods is high key quite trippy. Yeah, I kind of just, you know, just saying this character was like here before I stepped onto the scene, but <sighs> I've been put in the work. Uh, brought him up a little bit, you know, just doing what I what I can. <laughs> but yeah, Bell gets fucked up by those characters. Said he was mid. I always said he was like low mid, man. Mai 
Mai. Mai is like... Oh, I hate this character, man. Mai is the final evolution of EX Normal Guy. That's my thought on Mai. Mai is so incredibly belligerent in every single aspect of the game. She is like... These two are like, they do everything amazing. Mai is like, she does everything the best. Like, she has the best neutral in the game, arguably. She has like, the best defense in the game versus many, many characters. Mai is a GG character in a BB game. Yeah, I would agree. She, like... Mai just does so many things that are... Like, ugh, this character just does not make sense from, like, a fundamental design game poise standpoint. Like, I don't know how you are making a game that functions like this and make Mai. Because she just is so broken. And everything she does... She has, like, in terms of strike throw pressure, she has the best strike throw offensive style in the game. Like, her jab is identical to, uh... Her jab's identical to her throw animation, which makes her strike throw really fucked. There's no one else in the game where it's, like, literally identical except Mai. Those first six frames are exactly the same, though, which makes it so you effectively only have, like, a 15-frame window to just react to throw, which sets her apart very hard. Mm. Her defense is, like... Flip is just an insane defensive tool. It's really, really strong. She can't really, like, be belligerent versus projectile set play, but, like, who can? Like, that's something that my players and that players of characters, like, Lambda, like, multiple others will say and be like, oh, well, my defensive option doesn't work versus, like, Coco Pillar, or doesn't work versus, like, Rachel set play, so, like, it's not that good, but, like, it doesn't matter. Ragna can't DP that shit. Jin can't DP that shit. Tsubaki can't DP that shit. It's not really relevant in the grand scheme of things, because those things just don't lose to traditional defensive option. But like if your if your gimmick option that's better than a normal DP in like ninety nine percent of circumstances loses to that too, then it's like it doesn't make it worse than the thing that also loses to it already. Um Our neutral is crazy. This character has like fifteen jumps and the best air buttons in the game. She has the best backwards movement in the game, period. Her forwards movement is already, like, really fast and really crazy, but, like, she can move backwards faster than half the characters in the roster can move forwards, which is fucking ridiculous. Like, Mai is a character who, like, if she doesn't want to interact with you, you just, she, like, you cannot catch her for 95% of the cast. You kind of just got to hold that. Um, She chooses engagements, and she chooses, like, pace the game and just... Sets everything to her pace and does what she wants and makes makes you play the game on her terms, which is very, very strong. That's one of those things where it's like Tao does it and Bang do it, but hers is even stronger because not only does she have the insane movement, she also just has ridiculous buttons that you can't really contest. Like she has she has it all. Like you can't name a thing in this game except for like looping on reactable set play and say Mai doesn't have this because she does. She just has everything. She just does everything incredibly, incredibly well. She also probably has just straight up the best matchup chart in the game. I don't think Mai loses anyone in the cast. Mai has like five fives versus the select two characters, but she probably has the most favored matchups in the entire video game outright. And I don't, she like she doesn't have a single losing matchup. Would I rather block Mai or Subaki? Um, I don't know. Tsubaki has a command grab, but like... Ignoring Tsubaki's command grab, Mai's strike throw is absolutely better, but Tsubaki does have a command grab that kind of sets her apart. But yeah. Mai also has like... Mai has situations she can set up where she's like... Oh, I can only do my stance overhead here, so you don't have to block low. The thing with her is, is she can just cancel out of stances and do, like, press lows. 
in timings that would counter hit you if you mash on the overheads. So she can set up high low mix and a lot of points with like 20 frame really fucking fast overheads that you just have to hold. Especially on like your wake up or something, she'll like whiff five XX whatever and then just like do overhead or just like cancel stance and go into like two A or two B or whatever. You gotta hold stuff like that and it's really solid, really strong. Um Yeah, I think that's pretty much all to say for my though. Next up's Coco. Man, dude, where do I even start? So, I guess the weakest, I'll start with the weakest aspect of her kit. The weakest thing about Coco is the fact that her defense isn't super crazy, but... <sighs> the thing with Coco is she only has to be right once. She just does. She literally just does exactly what Arakune does, but with extremely strong neutral game. So her defense is like bad on paper, in quotation marks, but it's like if she mashes correctly once you lose. <clears throat> she has the best, like if she ever overdrives through anything you do, she has the best reward on her overdrive in the entire game. Because she locks you into a super ball combo that you can't burst. And you get hit by super ball mix, which you still can't burst because it's a super. And you just eat like 11k total right then and there and just lose the game. Her neutral is like some of the strongest in the game. She controls your movement in a way that just is so incredibly advantageous for her. Like blocked hits in neutral don't matter anymore to her whenever grabs are set properly. Um, she has super super strong buttons on top of grabs already being incredibly strong for both like making it so she doesn't care about you blocking hits to neutral also like controlling your movement not letting you jump at all making jump super super weak on top of that like i said buttons are mad good your buttons being super super good matters quite a bit um she has great like traps and things she can set neutral to Control your movement outside of grabs, like Fireball, 2-2-B, both super, super good, super, super relevant, super, super useful. Her offense is, uh, strong. There's no other way to put it. Her stagger game is really good. And she has, she has stuff like, um, Crush Trigger conversions in mid-screen because of how grabs get set incredibly difficult to like escape her stagger pressure and then once she gets one single hit she becomes like she gets the best opening mix in the entire game or like any other character on her pressure her cross-ups are just unreactable straight up she has high low 50 50 she has super super strong oki and once she gets super ball one time it's one hit that goes into super ball you just lose if you were at 80 percent the follow if you're at 80 percent or lower hp and she goes into Super Bowl, you lose the game. Like, just then and there, you simply lose the game. You eat like four 50 50s in a row, you eat like 7k unburstable, and then you die. And it's as simple as that. Character has the most insane belligerent win con in the entire video game. And like, it's not close. Without that win con, she's still really good because her neutral game is incredible. But that win con just sets her that much higher above. It is. It is that much of a difference maker. It is huge. Like there is no understating how strong Super Ball is. It is very, very crazy. Um Nami? I have Nami kinda low compared to where most people would put her, but she's like she obviously has a really, really good neutral. She has pretty good defense because she has two B. She has her backdash, she has the 7 frame super, she has strong offense, because she has like float, she has ribcage, but like at the end of the day, the reason why Nami's not above any of these three characters is because these three characters, they don't care how good your defense is, they will open you up. Nami can be blocked out, that is like the soul divide. 
I like it sounds like a a meme, but that is such a huge deal against the best players of this video game. That like you just can't be above these characters. If defense if a player defensive skill matters versus your character's offense, your character just they, you can't be better than these three. Like it's just like you simply can't. Um like she's really strong everywhere else. In terms of like ignoring offense, this character is probably just top one. But like offense, offensive strength matters too much in this game. You just need that offensive strength to be truly, truly disgusting. And these characters have it, plus being almost as fucked up as she is in other aspects of the game. They can reasonably idly be her and she has to just get off of you. Her best mix up, like the best thing she has, the only thing that's unreactable from her is her command grab, which having a command grab is good, but having a command grab is not looping high low. Like it just it just straight up isn't. And her high low is definitely reactable. Like no haha funny memes. You can just react to her high low. Her defense is clean. My easy way below Rachel. Word. I'll go ahead and get to her. I think I've pretty much made my point on Nami. I don't have too much more to say. So the thing with easy way is uh Easy Oi is an incredibly strong character. Once she is in gain art, she's better than Rachel. Maybe better than probably better than Carl. When, when Easy Oi is fully stocked up and in gain art, she's top one. But at the end of the day, she still does start the game as a normal character. She would be like here or something if she could just pop OD and get stocks, but at the end but like she does have that as an option. Um She's very, very strong. Like I'm trying to collect my thoughts so I can say exactly how I want to say this. She's very good, but like she has, she has the downside of like you can just possibly win the game at round start. You just win round start and beat her and kill her before she goes into gain arts, or force her to burst, and force her to play a st standard game, or like she pops OD on round start round one, and then she wins round one, and round two she doesn't have overdrive anymore. There's that as like a significant factor, or like she pops overdrive and goes gain arts, and somehow you know like winning neutral versus gain arts, and then she just doesn't have a burst. Shit like that is like pretty relevant whenever these two characters just start off the game being godlike. Um, besides that, I feel like there's not too much to say. Like her defense is obviously crazy in gain arts. It's fine in normal mode, but like good. Um, her offense is. I'll talk about her offense after. Her neutral is like, she has really good buttons. In gain art, she has like the best, she has like the only real neutral skip in the game. Being fireball, teleport, that shit is insanely strong. Um, offensively, she has probably the strongest like projectile spacing trap game in, in the game, besides maybe Rachel. That stuff is really under, like underrated, but it's incredibly strong from her. And then her, like, once she goes into gain arts, her resource flow is positive if your routing and everything is nice enough. Oh. And then her offense is just insane because the thing with her offense is these two characters kind of have cosmetic resources, but they're still, like, in a vacuum. You can block them out and negate the resources in their outer mix ups. The thing with Easy Yoi is she is not a resource character when it comes to her offense. Easy way offensive structure is traditional strike throw. Like in every sense of the word, except her strike throw is her strikes are 15 frame overheads and you just have to deal with it. There is no like, I'm going to guess right so many times in a row and then she's going to run out or whatever and I'm going to like be able to get out. It is literally, I have to guess and I have to like mash and I have to challenge or I'm never going to escape her pressure and I'm going to be stuck blocking unreactable mix-ups for the rest of my life. 
which is really really fucked up um yeah that's a really strong thing from her kind of what sets her apart from the others like super super strong set play characters and then i feel like the the like burrito os thing kind of whatever i feel like a lot of characters can do that it's just skd played easy always with people equate that to her because he's like the the os guy but that's just a strong thing in general in this video game in my opinion um <clears throat> Besides that, it's like her mix-up is better than people give it credit for because not only does she have crazy left-right, she also has her. Well, not only does she have crazy high-low, she also has really strong left-rights. Like she can do long dash and like JC and cross you up. She can do like a safe jump and then do like down steer forward dash to get hit you like right side same side or like up steer forward dash to hit you cross up and those hit like frame frame same frame that's a 50 50 so you can do like a lot of true 50 50s on like specific setups like uh she can do like id up steer id down steer and like hit high low same frame she has good fuzzies like, her offense is just incredibly strong when she gets going. Rachel. Rachel's not really hard to explain, honestly. Rachel is literally just... Her neutral's great. She has some of the best zoning neutral in the game. Her offense is very, very good. She, uh, she obviously just runs 50-50 high-low mix. That's just, just that. You just have to hold that, but... Outside of that, her spacing trap game with projectiles, which I talked about a second ago with Easy Way, is also like really, really strong. The thing with uh, Rachel is when she throws her projectiles, they become active and disjointed very early on. So like, say you're at round start, <clears throat> and you like you throw a Lobelia and Ragnar presses 5B at the same time, you're going to win. He's going to get counter hit by that fireball as soon as it comes out of your hand. And then you're going to take your counter hit and kill him off of it. Which that's like a strong thing, neutral wise, and at round start and stuff. But it's also an incredibly strong thing on the pressure game because the thing is, her spaced fireballs just become outright plus. So she can do things like toss Lobelia at strong ranges, and then you just can't really challenge it effectively, and then it hits you, and she does like six 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 B, and does like TK lightning rod, and then it's just you're minus twenty. She's running offense again. You just have to hold that. Her conversion game is also absurd, yeah. Rachel can convert, like, any hit <clears throat> into, like, two-thirds screen corner carry if she's really nasty. Or if you're already close to the corner, she can convert any hit into, like, 5k. Her damage is ridiculous. Like, the only weakness that this character has is her defense is not that great. But, like, outside of that, she does everything best in the game. And she also has offensive structure that ignores defensive strength because she just does mix-ups that aren't reactable she just does 13 frame high low you just guess that is what it is you guess wrong once and she does 5k to you off an instant overhead or like 6k to you off a low that is what it is <laughs> all right pretty much just carl and bang left to talk about isn't it so Carl. Carl top one is like a little controversial, I think. I think most characters put him like second to fourth, but I think Carl is incredibly strong. I think the thing with Carl is he has the uh like he has the resource that matters the least in this game. Like Carl runs out of doll less than Rachel runs out of wind, and that character already never runs out of wind. Carl Dahl is like an incredibly cosmetic resource. His offense is the best in the game. He does exactly what Rachel or Easy would do. Yeah, Japan puts him and Rachel as number one. Yeah, I mean, Japan is right in that respect, I think. I think those two characters are better than Izanami, who NA likes to put top one. 
Um, but yeah, his offense doesn't even need to be like talked about. His offense is just the best in the game. He does what Rachel does, except if he gets a hit, he just unblockable loops you until you die. He also has good fuzzy. He has good left right, which Rachel doesn't have. He has like this character has literally everything you could ever ask for offensively. His offense is incredibly belligerent. Um. He abuses every single defense, like offensive tool well. It's mid screen crush trigger conversion, mid screen godlike cross ups, fuzzies, like insane high low outside of that. Strike throw game is amazing. Dagger pressure is amazing. Like, even without Dolly, it's good cross up with J2C. Like, this character just does, literally just does it all. In terms of offense, he does everything. Like I said, he gets a hit, you run unblockable loops. That is it. Um, his defense is like arguably the best in the game because counter assault doll is like the best counter assault doll is the best defensive tool in the video game bar none in my opinion I think dangerous defense as a concept is like just like it's just not balanced it's just not a thing that should exist in a fighting game dangerous defense is actually just as it exists for Carl in blaze blue is absolutely belligerent like, you cannot pressure this character. You have to, you have to hard bait him, like, to such an insane degree, because you can't even block the counter assault. You can't get hit by like Conbrio or whatever. You have to hard bait him to such an insane degree that like, if you're wrong, he will just get a big hit and kill you. Because you have to do something insane. <clears throat> so. We've established that his offense is the best in the game. And we've established that his defense is probably the best in the game. And the thing that people like to say for Carl is that his neutral is bad compared to the other top tiers, but I just disagree. Like, outright. <clears throat> this character has... So I'll go over the obvious first, and I'll go over like the non-obvious things. So Carl's buttons are amazing. Carl has good corny options in neutral with Doll. He has good things like... Uh, Dash Allegretto. Volante's good. Umbrio's good. In 4D, like the hand spinny thing is good. But um his his movement's okay sometimes. He has like a his dash super jump, if you have the execution for it, is like better than Susan. Probably the best one in the game. Um He just has. Um he has really strong air buttons too, not just the counter buttons that are crazy. Like all these things are good, but like the, the issue people always bring up is like, oh his approach isn't that crazy. But the thing is like Carl just doesn't have to approach you. Like if Carl stands behind Ada or fucking or behind Nirvana or whoever. All these dolls look the same, man. <laughs> If Carl, Carl stands behind Doll and Doll walks back and forth, literally, what are you gonna do? Like you have to, you have to go in at some point. Or like you lose. So that shit eats all projectiles. You can't zone him. The Doll walks back and forth. You have to eventually force an unfavorable interaction against Doll. Like you hit Doll, and you're stuck in hit stun for 80 billion years, and Carl kills you. You have to jump over Doll and deal with Carl having the best anti airs in the game. Like, you have to, you can run for 99 seconds if you want, but it doesn't matter. If you both have the same life total, because you didn't win round start. So it's like, okay, I have to get in eventually. Anytime I ever get in and interact against Carl, my interaction is going to be unfavored. Because the because Carl has such incredible buttons. And Ada is so, like, insane at blocking off neutral pathings and blocking off, like, strong avenues of playing neutral. Yeah, and Carl is like, if you try to run the clock, Carl's movement is kind of bad versus approaching you, but he's really good at locking you down. He will corner you, like I said, because uh, he, he struggles to like get in off rip, but like if he's slowly walking you to the corner, he can cover so many potential movement, is movement pathings and like movement escapes and shit with Conbrio and like Volante alongside himself because he's two entities at once like you just can't you can't do anything about it 
Carl is like the most... I feel like every other puppet character in fighting games, they feel like... Like, their design is that they're a character who has like an exterior entity that does things and kind of aids them. But Carl literally just functions as two characters. Like, in the truest sense of the word. He kind of just is two characters. Like, that's just it. And you just have to deal with that. And that makes him incredibly fucked up. <clears throat> I think his neutral is probably better than, like... Uh... I mean, it's hard to say that it's outright better than any of your characters, but you can't really say that it's worse. Which makes it hard to call him worse than any of these characters when he does everything else better. Oh yeah, there are definitely other puppet character designs who suck, but Carl is like the most egregious one of all time. it's safe to say it's worse? I don't know. I mean, I think there's an argument for Carl's Neutral being better than Nami. I think there's an argument for it being better than, like, Easy Oids. Better than Coco's. I mean, I wouldn't, like, dig deep into that argument, because I think that's a hard thing to argue, but it's, like, it's so close. That you can't count it as a weakness. You can't like discount him because his neutral is worse. I just don't think it is. I think it's just as good, possibly better. Yeah, that's pretty much it. Talked about everybody except Bang. I'll go over Bang real quick. Better than Easy Way and Neutral in some matchups. I mean, Easy Way just has the best neutral in the game when she goes into Gainhart, but I don't know. I think the thing with Carl is like. Like I said, he can't just get on get in on you. But any interaction you ever take with him is unfavored. Whereas like this character, it's rough to get to a situation where you can't interact with her, but whenever you do get into a situation where you're interacting with her, it's not that bad. Same for this character. To an extent this character This character kinda always sucks to interact with too, for sure. But I don't think it's as bad as Carl. I think Carl trades worse approach than all these characters for just like better ability to just defensively turtle and shell out in neutral which I don't know I think that's a very very valid style of neutral and it's something that like no character can invalidate so I don't think he's objectively worse than anyone in neutral um finally bang this is my goat so bang Kind of a crazy character, man. There are things that Bang does poorly, such as he doesn't have an anti-air. Um, kind of it, to be honest. <laughs> like his grounded buttons aren't great. That is a weakness that he has. It's pretty legit, but those are kind of his only weaknesses. His ground game's not terrible. Five V's fine. His 2B is usable sometimes. But all this Carl does have some losing matchups. Maybe. Who can say at the end of the day? <laughs> I don't know if I believe those Carl players in that. But yeah, Bang is like. He doesn't have very many glaring weaknesses. His biggest weakness is the fact that he doesn't have offense that ignores defensive strength. But like. His neutral. The thing with his neutral is there are some characters who don't care about nails. And that, like, weakens his neutral. Oh. Um, but his neutral is good. His neutral is great. His neutral is arguably some of the best in the game. If it wasn't for the characters like Carl, or like... 
Coco kind of invalidate his neutral playstyle. Fang kind of just has the best neutral in the game. Um, his movement is so incredibly insane paired with Nails being like such an amazing way to control your opponent's movement. Like dominate the neutral like flow and like the pace of the game that his neutrals track. Like it's just, his neutral is hard to play. You need to be really like solid. Like taking account for a lot to make his neutral really fucked up. But whenever you do, his neutral is ridiculous. Um, his air buttons are really good. His JB is kind of just like Jin JC with a hurt box. You can poke characters like Ragna who don't have amazing horizontal buttons. His JC is like most people don't know how good Fang JC is. Fang JC covers such a great area of the screen. It is like. It covers up at an angle and it's disjointed. So we can poke and contest airspaces that most characters just cannot do, which is really, really strong. And it's also like a 4.5k counter hit starter. So he literally just hits you with it and you die. He hits you with it and then you die next interaction, which is crazy. Um, his J is pretty good. He has the best reward in the game off of like jailing you air to air mid screen or anywhere. Doesn't matter if it's mid screen or not, because he has an air command grab. So if anyone else in the air hits you, like a lot of characters are good at jailing you to the ground. But the thing with Bang, the differentiation them. All these other characters, all they can do is air throw you. You can just tech that and it's easy because it's the only mix up option that they have. But Bang having an air, like a real air command grab, it makes it so that he has a legitimate 50 50 where if he ever jails you in the air, you have to guess do I mash or do I block? And you just have to guess. And it's like that's the end of the story. If you guess wrong, you're going to eat 3k from air command grab or you're going to eat like 4k from mash. Depending on screen position, he's going to get four seals from either option. Um, yeah. His neutral is just crazy. Like his neutral is just insanely, insanely good. His defense is... Um, I mean, he's a six frame jam that hits Croucher, and he has his drive. His neutral, his defense is good, because he has everything standard. He's a good reversal super, a good jab to mash with. And then drives are like this option that the drives are pretty skill based because they lose to a lot of things like drives are very hard call on options but they are such high reward that like it makes them strong they're like uh they're more specialized than hakum and parry they have more counterplay than even those but it's like when he's right he just he side swaps you and he does like 4k and, like that just is what it is you just hold that and it's very very strong Either does that or he like cancels an OD and does like 5-6k. They're incredibly, incredibly powerful. Um, his offense is good. So, his ability to board too low, I agree. The ability to mental stack you is really strong. Um, he has multiple overheads that are good. So J228 overheads are crazy because they're like 23 frames, which isn't that fast. But the fact of the matter is that they're plus seven. So he gets, or they're plus six, my fault. So he gets J228 overhead. And you're just in a 50 50 50 situation right then and there between 2A low for command grab. And he can just do that whenever push you in a 50-50 situation again. Um, 6 speed is like a decent can opener. His ability to stagger pressure is whatever because his gatlings aren't great. But the thing with it is, is it's hard to mash on him. His jab is like a good pressure reset option to go with. Like a, he, him doing 5A, 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 5A is pretty legit. It's a hard thing to escape. Because you do just have to kind of guess on it. Um, 6A is pretty good. 6A paired with J22A makes his pressure like pretty scary to escape. Because like you can't mash J22A consistently. Because it'll just get cooked by 6A and eat like 4K that way. Um, and then 6A itself is also a pressure reset. 
Then on top of like his pressure resets all being strong, if he frame traps you with any of his B normals, you literally just eat 5-6k. These are like his best starters. You just die that way. Um, 5C is another move where it's like, once he enforces the mental stack, 5C on paper is like a whatever overhead. I mean, it kind of is just a whatever overhead, but the fact that he has it at all, and the fact that it does like 4.5k on hit, and it's jump cancelable, so we can just like reset his pressure, it's jump cancelable, and it Gatling's into 6a, so we can just like reset his pressure off of it, makes it pretty good. Um, he, uh, I talked about command grab a little bit already, but him having it at all makes him super, super strong. Command grabs in this game are incredibly powerful, and his is like mad high reward. Like, bang, RCOD off of command grab is like free. Well, not free, but it's like a 6k K damage cash out. So, command grab as, a, as an option is always very scary having it on the table. <clears throat> and then. I'm sorry. Keep on taking drinks. My throat's starting to hurt a little bit. Like, all these things combined. Like, just make his standard strike throw game really scary because you're looking for so much that, like, he does normal throw, and you're not ready to tech it. Then Bang has, like, some of the highest reward on normal throw in the game. He does, like, 4k off any normal throw. Then you're just eating shit off that, too. You're looking out for a lot whenever you're fighting in pressure and, like, playing defense against this character. The big thing is he's weak to DPs, but, like, if you guess wrong, a DP is just gonna kill you. Just off rip, he's gonna do. Like, with zero resources, he's gonna 6k fatal you, and you're gonna take like 6.5k damage. If he has resources, you're gonna die. Um. So, yeah. Offense is good. Defense is like situational, but good. Neutral is amazing. His bumper pressure is super, super good too. So, his bumper is like uh, mid screen, they're not great, but. In the corner, they basically just make it so that any normal he does is plus on bumper cancel. Not anything. B's are zero, and A's are minus. But anything higher than that is always going to be plus. So like, most things are plus. You have to constantly guess for tick command grab of anything. He gets stuff like uh, 50 50 off 6B. He gets like multiple triple overhead setups. He gets unreactable in a lot of situations. He's high enough. Like, you can do forward dash, JB, or, like, down dash 2A in a lot of situations. Of like, a jump in or a 6B or whatever. Um, Bumper just, like, greatly buffs his offense. It also makes Crush Trigger, like, a, an insane threat because he does Crush Trigger. And on Bumper, he'll get, like, 4K plus off Crush Trigger. Um, which, Crush Trigger plus Command Grab, having both, will be, like... Abusing bumper is really scary to deal with because if you're holding barrier, you obviously can't jump. So like, you have to barrier because crush trigger is such a threat. But if you do barrier, he's gonna come and grab you, and then you're gonna eat 4k that way. So bumper is really strong. Um, yeah, he has all these things, and then like, is it tearless time again? It is. It's always tearless time. And then like. I haven't really talked about the main thing that I think makes this character strong. I mean, besides his neutral. His neutral being strong makes him really good. But all these things that I said are really good. But the biggest thing about Bang that makes him such a good character is Bang has so many chances to mess up. I'm not even talking in terms of like his risk reward. The thing with Bang is he has so many chances to like fuck up and so many chances to like do silly things. Because if he gets his good reward, he kind of just wins. Like, here's the thing with Bang. If you have nails, outside of characters who don't care about nails, who are few and far between, if you have nails, you don't have to worry about neutral. So when you go back to neutral, you're going to win neutral. Like, you're just going to win neutral. If you're clean enough, because nails are that broken. So if you have nails left, you always have that in the back pocket. You always have favored neutral. If you get four seals, as long as you have 50 meter, you ever go back to neutral, 
you're gonna still win neutral. You have the four seal super. Like he always has something in the back pocket as a fail safe, where like he just doesn't care. You like say he doesn't have fifty meter, he has no nails. If he has overdrive, he's not scared to go on defense ever. He has so many opportunities and so many like things in the back pocket to pull out that like he's you can't checkmate Bang as easy as you can checkmate other characters. Like as normal guys like Jin or Ragnar or whatever, all you have is like do I have overdrive or not? Or do I have fifty meter to like RCDP? But Bang, like, you have to account for so many different things. You have to drain him of like so many different options. You can finally have a chance and even when we drain him of all those options, you could just guess right one time with sixty or whatever, and then still do like 4k and side swap you and all of a sudden you're guessing for game right then and there. <clears throat> yeah. And the thing with him is, is like he both has so many chances to escape things and he has like so many different fail safes that you have to account for. But he also has like incredibly high risk rewards, so it's like you're accounting for all these crazy options. Like you don't account for one option, or like, and you just like you just die because of it. Like you need to you need to deal with five different things, and if you fail to deal deal with one of those single things, he's going to kill you like right then and there. Win the game off of it. He's either gonna just outright do five k, or he's gonna like go into OD or reset you fifteen times. You know, win neutral and get in, etc. Cetera, etc. Cetera. Character just like until you take all of his nails, all of his meter. All this burst and put him in a situation where he's not going to get burst back for the rest of the round. He's not going to get 50 meter back, and this character always has a chance to do something. <clears throat> but I mean, yeah, I didn't really even really like. I mentioned OD, but his OD is also just the best in the game. If you get caught blocking OD ever, you're probably going to lose the round. All those things combined to make a very strong character. Alright y'all, I think that's pretty much it for my tier list discussion. I don't really have anything else left to say. Those are my current thoughts. On character power in the video game. I was gonna play after I made a tier list, but I might just call it, I'm gonna lie. I'm pretty tired. I was at work for a decent amount of time today. I kinda just wanna chill, maybe watch some TV or something. I'll catch y'all all next time. Peace.